Hi guys, it's Noel with creationeffects.com and today I'm going to show you how I made this shot in After Effects. You can see we've got a bunch of flies flying around this dead cowboy and there's even a few flies that land on his face and crawl around. Most of you are, are probably coming from the other tutorial for Swarms, but if you're not, let me tell you what Swarms is. Swarms is an After Effects template which lets you create realistic custom animations of 3D swarms of insects uh, which uh, then you can composite onto your shots or motion graphics. You'll definitely want to have a look. There's a link in the description. Uh, it's an awesome effect with lots of insect species to choose from. And uh, while you're there, you can also check out schools and flocks. So you can create all kinds of very realistic creature animations to enhance your shots. So let's get straight to the tutorial. Uh, I will be using the swarms template for this and I'm going to be going over how to animate insects to land as well as a bunch of tips for compositing the insects into your shots. Uh, if you're just looking for the general tutorial for using the template, that's a different video. So go to the Swarms webpage and uh, you can access it there. All right, I'm going off script. That's a rare thing for me. No bug jokes, none of that nonsense. I'm going to try and uh, make this animation as fast as I can, and it might be full of happy little accidents, but that's okay. All right, so I've got Swarms open here, and uh, these are all my species. I know that I'm just going to be using the flies uh, for this shot, so I'm just going to delete everything else and uh, reduce all the clutter and make the file size smaller. And the uh, first thing I'll do is import my footage. I'll go to File, Import, File. And here's my shot, Dead Cowboy. You'll want to pay attention to the resolution and the frame rate of your footage. Um, you can see this is 24 frames per second. And all of my insect comps are 29.97 frames per second. So you'll want to change those to match your footage. I'm going to open both of these comps and I'll open the composition settings. And I'll just set that to 24. And uh, let's, let's start with the hardest stuff first. We'll do the fly that lands on his face. That would be the 3D fly. And usually you'll want to make a copy of the comp uh, so that you can always come back and use this original comp if you need to. So I'll just duplicate it and uh, we'll name this Dead Cowboy. Let me play it back. So you can see we've got a swarm of several flies. Just to animate a single insect, we don't need all of these follower flies. So I'm going to delete all the blue layers. So all we have is a leader right now. And uh, I'll bring my footage into here. You can see we've got uh, some camera motion in here. And we don't need the comp to be this long. I'm going to right click and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. All right, if your shot is static, uh, you can skip this next step. But since uh, our shot has some camera movement, we're going to want to camera track this footage. So we can do that with a tracker panel. Just go to Window and Tracker. And with the layer selected, click on Track Camera. And then it's going to take a minute or so to analyze the footage. All right, I fast forwarded and it's all done. Uh, you can see we've got all these little points here. What that did is it mapped out the footage. And so all of these little points uh, represent a 3D location in our scene. And you can see as we scrub through that they track uh, with the motion in the footage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in on his face here. I want to put a fly right here in his cheek and we'll have him walk across his cheek. Um, if there was a point right on his cheek that'd be great, but there isn't. So I'm going to just choose this one on the, on the chin here. Um, that's pretty much on the same plane as the cheek. So I'll just uh, right click on that point and I want to do create null and camera. And what that does is it creates this null layer here. And if I hit the P key, you can see where that points position is in 3D space. So now all we got to do is uh, link that fly to that position. Um, you could parent this top layer to the null layer, but I think I'm just going to copy these values and put them in here. And then I can just delete this null layer. All right, and it's not there. And that's because 
if we go to our control layer, uh, you can see we've got all these wiggle settings and the swarm spread settings. So it's, there it is, it's flying around. But if we reduce these amounts here to zero, okay, now it's on his beard right at that same point. If we go forward in time, we can see it's attached to his beard. Um, we want it up here though, so we can just offset it by opening the position property and moving it up. We'll have it start right about there. And I know that's a ginormous fly, way too big, but that's okay because I want to be able to see uh, what we're doing. And actually, I'm going to increase it a little bit, make it 15%. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is add a keyframe uh, for where it's, it lands. We'll have it fly into frame and then land at this two second mark. So I'll add a keyframe at the two second mark. And then I'll go back about a second and I'll move it off frame. And whenever you're moving stuff around in 3D space, it's always a good idea to go to a, a different angle. We'll go to top view. You can see here's our camera. And uh, here's our fly back here. If I select this keyframe, uh, you can see the little handles for the vertices and we can drag those to make a curved motion. So that's kind of the motion path I'm looking for. Let me go back to active camera. Let me bring it down a little bit. That'll work. So let's have him walk across the face over a couple seconds. So I'll go forward a couple seconds and then I'll move him to the side right about there. That added another keyframe and then I'll go forward one more second and I'll have him fly off screen on the left side this time. And the thing to remember about bugs is that they don't take off and land at an angle like a plane would. When a fly takes off, it's going to jump up and it's going to come out. Um, so looking down at it at the scene like we are, that would be this direction. So it would jump up and then start moving forward. All right, you can see as it lands, the motion path has this curve that goes way out. So the fly is going to go on this little detour here, and it's going to look really weird. We'll have to fix that. Um, I'll do that in a moment. But first, I'm going to make an adjustment to the speed. Um, these little dots here, they represent the speed that this layer is moving. Um, and you can see they're all spread out evenly, so it's going at a constant speed. I want it to actually slow down a little bit as it lands, and then when it takes off, it'll start a little slower, and then it'll speed up as it gets, as it gets further away. So what I'll do, I'll select that landing keyframe, and I'll right click, and you can't see it, but at the bottom, go to Keyframe Assistant, and then do Easy Ease In. And uh, you can see that these keyframes get a little closer and closer together. We'll do the same thing on this side, Go to Keyframe Assistant, and on this one it's going to be Easy Ease Out. Alright, and now we'll get rid of that stupid curve. Just select both of those keyframes, right click, go to Keyframe Interpolation, and we'll set the Spatial Interpolation to Linear. So now we've got a straight path, and uh, I'm going to move this keyframe forward a little bit. And I might even put a tiny curve in there. So now that that's the curve of his cheek. And you may have noticed that when we uh, changed that keyframe to Easy Ease, we lost that angle uh, that the insect had when it was coming in for a landing. Um, this line just kind of jumped over here. Um, so I would actually probably just add another keyframe. I'll use my pen tool and I'll restore that angle. This would be a problem. I got a little S curve there. That's why it's always important to edit your keyframes in two different views. Let's play that back. And you're thinking, wow, that's really awful. And yeah, but we're not finished, so bear with me. So from where he lands uh, right now, he's just moving steadily to where he takes off. And I don't want that. I want him to 
walk a little bit and then pause and then walk a little bit and then take off. I'm going to go to one frame after where he lands and I'll add a keyframe and I'll just drag that keyframe over this way about 15 frames. So now he's basically paused until he reaches that keyframe and then he's going to walk to that next keyframe and then I want him to pause again. So he'll be standing still until he gets to that keyframe and then he'll walk the rest of the way and then take off. One more thing I'm going to do to this fly's position is add some wiggle to his flight. And um, not while he's landed, it'll just actually be keyframed um, so that it starts out higher and then it reduces as he lands. And then as he takes off, it gets high again. So we'll do that on the control layer. Remember, we've got all these wiggle controls. I'm going to be making my changes to this one, wiggle three. Um, because this one affects the leader and this one if you remember the other tutorial Does not affect the leader. It just affects the followers So for this one, uh, I'm gonna go to where he lands and I'll add keyframes for the horizontal vertical and depth um, At an amount of zero and I'll go back a few frames and I'll crank it up to 2000 And I almost forgot, we want to animate these wings so that they stop flapping once he lands. So on the control layer, that would be in the wind flapping section. Uh, we've got this section called manual wind flapping. If you open that, uh, we've got a control that says turn on manual control. So that will disable the automatic wing flapping. I'll go to where he lands and I'll add a keyframe and then go forward one frame and I'll turn it on. So now the wings are motionless. Um, I actually want them to fold back um, so it's in a more natural position for a, a fly that has landed. So I want to keyframe this position wings for landing control to go from 0 to 100. And we can just do that over two or three frames. Okay, this is where he takes off, so I'll turn it back on. All right, in most cases, you're going to want to do some color correction to make the insect look like it belongs in your shot. And usually you can do that uh, with the, these light layers. For this shot, I got really lucky because if we go forward a few seconds, you can see we got a real fly that lands on him. So I can use this as a reference. And uh, this fly you can see is very, it's much lighter really small and really blurry. So that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna try and recreate with my fly. Uh, first thing I'd want to do is brighten it a little bit. Um, just to increase the overall brightness the ambient layer is best for doing that. Just double click it. And you can increase the intensity. If your footage had a certain tint to it you can change the color of the light here. I'll just leave that as it is. All right, now we can fix this orientation because this, this, what is this? That's not right. So I'm going to select that segment one layer and I'm going to hit the R key. That'll bring up all the rotation properties. Um, you can see that uh, because we have these corners in his motion path and because the fly is programmed to always point in the, in the direction of the motion path, the fly comes facing the guy and then all of a sudden he flips and as he takes off he flips again so we're, we're gonna have to manually keyframe the orientation to fix that what I'll do is I'll go to about here where to where he's about a foot away from the face and I'll add an orientation keyframe and then I'll go forward to where he lands before he flips and I'll zoom way in and I'm just gonna play with these controls and try to get him to be at the right angle. And I'll look at it in top view. This plane really should be oriented with the path. So now as we go frame by frame you can see he transitions into that position and then he flips which uh, we're gonna have to fix. So uh, what I'll do, I'll go to that last keyframe 
And when I select layer, you can see we've got the Z, X, and Y arrows here. And I'm gonna make a mental note of how these are arranged. So blue points to the right, red to the left. And when I go forward one frame, I have to try and recreate that. And uh, you just gotta play with it until you feel like it's similar. And that's close enough for me. So then we'll go forward. I'm gonna copy that last keyframe and paste it right before he takes off. And I'm gonna go forward a few frames and then I'm gonna copy that first keyframe. Remember, this is the, the normal orientation and I'll paste that. All right, now I can reduce the scale. All right, to get that blur that the, the real fly has, I'm gonna pre-compose these layers. So I'll just select them all and I'll go to layer and pre-compose. We'll call this fly landing pre-comp. Okay, I'll select that layer and I'll go to effect and blur and sharpen and I'll add a Gaussian blur. So I set it at 2.5. That's really soft, but that's what the other one was like. And it's still really dark, so I'm gonna go to Effect, Color Correction, and Add a Levels Effect. And I'm gonna dial down the blacks. And one other thing I, I almost forgot, to make that fly look like it's not just floating on his face, we can add a drop shadow to him, and uh, it'll do a lot to make it look realistic. I'll just select a layer and then go to layer and layer styles and drop shadow. And I'll open the properties down here. We wanna match the angle. This side of his face is lighter so we can assume the sun is over here. And uh, reduce the opacity and the distance. If you want, you could animate these properties of the shadow so that the shadow kind of disappears and maybe gets farther away as the bug lands and then as it takes off. Let's just not do that now, but say we did. All right, that was the hard part. Now let's add a swarm of flies. We'll go to our project panel and uh, let's open up this 3D fly comp. And this is actually exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, the only thing is we've got this, this little bug that's not moving much, it's really distracting. Um, that's the leader bug, so I'm just going to hide those layers. And also I want more bugs in this, so I'm just going to select a few of them and copy them. Alright, so we got 23 flies now. I'll drag that in here. And I forgot to hide the sky layer. Let's add one more swarm of flies. Uh, this one will be more concentrated around his body. Um, for that one, I'll use the 2D fly comp. Let me go to top view. And uh, I'm going to move him back a little bit away from where our camera would be and over to the right because that's where the cowboy was. And you can see that these flies are really spread out. So I'm going to go to the control layer and uh, I'll set the spread to zero and I'll cut these wiggle amounts by half. But I still want them to fly around at the same speed so I'll double the wiggle speed. That's close enough. So we'll put the 2D fly comp in there and I'm an idiot. So I'll go back and hide that sky layer and let's try that. And one final thing I might add to this, because my cowboy, he doesn't look dead enough. There's too much color in his face. So what I can do, I'll just really quick add an adjustment layer. And I'll add a little mask on his face and feather it. And I'll keyframe it so that it moves with his face. And 
and I'll add a hue saturation effect and just bring down that saturation until he looks dead. Okay. I hope that looks good. All right, I'm gonna, one last thing. Um, we need to add motion blur. We don't need to, but it, it always looks better, I think. So I gotta open these comps and I'll switch on motion blur. That's this button here. And that should be it. I'll render it out. So there you have it. Obviously I fast forwarded a few parts of that, but uh, still it didn't take us that long. I hope you learned a thing or two and uh, I'll see you guys at the next tutorial.